Okay. Hello, welcome to my talk um, about the Qt Creator for microcontroller development. Um, hmm? I think so, yes. Okay, is it loud enough? Yeah, yeah? okay. Um, okay, perhaps a little bit about me. I started embedded development when I was 15 on 80 uh, C535 and I'm doing mostly embedded stuff with embedded Linux, but this is a side project of mine and well, um, yeah. So what I'm going to talk about today, I'm giving you an, oh, or probably I'm just doing a quick overview what is the background of my uh, uh, people here. Who has used Qt Creator? Okay, quite a lot, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, then the, you probably know a, a, quite a lot um, about it. Have you used Eclipse? Okay. Uh, code blocks? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm giving a, a short overview of a Qt Creator. I'm going to show you what the bare metal plugin for the Qt Creator gives you, and I'm giving you an overview over the improvements um, of the bare metal plugin and I'm going to do a, a short hands-on presentation afterwards. Mm. Okay, um, what's Qt Creator? Qt Creator is a main development environment for the uh, Qt project, so it's mainly for, has been coming from desktop development nowadays. It has a lot of development options for um, cross-platform development um, it's internally, it uh, has a modular design, so everything is uh, implemented by plugins and so on, and it's cross-platform. So for the host platform, you have the main desktop targets, and you have a lot of targets nowadays for desktop, mobile, embedded Linux, and bare metal. So you have quite broad, um, um, options what you can develop on and to. Okay, uh, I think uh, you, you probably know most of the stuff giving, giving you a background, so uh, I uh, um, just uh, highlighting the, for me, the best features Qt Creator has. It's fast navigation, so you have a um, code model in behind which um, Nowadays has also an experimental, or is it? I don't know if it's not experimental by now, but uh, it's also a um, more sophisticated but slower code model based on LLVM. And uh, you can switch between both depending on if you like more, if you're using more modern C++ features, probably you're better off with the LLVM um, code model, but well, they're both pretty good, in my opinion. Um, well, you've got syntax highlighting, go code checking as you type, auto-completion, code folding, context-sensitive help, but you have to do some work to have your own code um, with context-sensitive help because you have to create the cute specific help files, which can be done, but it's quite a bit of work to do, and you have parentheses hmm, matching, so um, it's easy to navigate with parentheses and so on. And personally, what I also like, I just didn't put it on the a slide over here, is that you have an EI mode for um, typing, so you don't type any weird stuff um, as you used to if you're using the VI mode stuff. So. If you have any questions or so, just interrupt me and I'm happy to, to answer your questions. Um, there have been some new features in 2014 for the Qt Creator. Um, that's support for Android development, the client code model I just talked about, um, C99 support has been improved, uh, like um, Lambda expressions, 
designated initializers and some stuff more. Um, you have column editing, um, so you can do some block editing and stuff like that on multiple rows. Um, and uh, one thing that's a misfeature for the embedded stuff is that you need an GDB with Python support enabled because they dropped support for GDBs without Python scripting support, which is mainly bad for the people working on non-Linux platforms. Okay. So, yeah, what's bare metal development anyway? Um, in it's um, for the small class chips, the main chips on the market are the ARM Cortex M or R class devices. Um, I think they are the most popular. Um, they have only a few K of RAM and flash, and they're all built up in, on one chip, um, which means they're pretty cheap nowadays. Um, so given that they are so small, you normally need a hardware debugger to talk to them. Um, um, they have no or only lightweight operating systems. Um, so if you're using an open source hardware debugger, I'm using is open, what I'm using is open OCD. I would um, recommend to use a um, Free Artos, which has the task support built in by, by OpenOCD. So currently the list is uh, ECOS, Free Artos, Chibi OS, or AMP kernel. And if you have some other, um, if you're developing on embedded Linux stuff or so, it, you don't gonna use the bare metal plugin because you can use remote Linux uh, debugging, which is also very good supported in Qt Creator, but I'm not going to talk about that here. But it's working for several years now, so um, that's nothing new. Okay, the bare metal plugin is um, adding, basically adding support for hardware debuggers in Qt Creator. That was the only thing that's missing. We have a pretty good editing stuff and, and all the IDE stuff you're expecting, but this was a small part missing. And to get this up and running, a uh, few things had to be added to the Qt Creator. Um, the Qt Creator itself organizes um, its targets by kits. So a kit is a set of um, um, compiler, um, debugger, um, and devices you put together. And with this kit, you then have a um, target defined for your debugging purposes. Uh, so by adding a new bare metal kit, um, it's possible to, to add support for, for hardware debuggers. And with this kit, you also need a, a bare metal device, which has also been added by the bare metal plugin. And um, there are now GDB server providers, um, which um, I can, I'll talk about later, which um, make debugging a little bit more comfortable. Okay. Um, here's I will show that later on in a hands-on. Um, so you to just this quick start, how you start bare metal debugging, and it's pretty quick and pretty comfortable. So first, as bare metal is an experimental plugin, uh, you need to enable the plugin because it's by default disabled. And uh, so you go into the help about plugins dialog and enable the plugin. And after that, you have to restart Qt Creator, and then you go to the tools, options, build and run settings, 
and set up a kit. And um, I talked about the kits before. And you need to get a toolchain for your device. So you can either use a toolchain available like the toolchain um, on Launchpad embedded GCC toolchain. It's, for example, an ARM toolchain, but any GCC based toolchain will do. Um, Qt Creator also has support for LLVM as backend and some other um, toolchains, but I think um, the most you mostly might have a G GCC toolchain. And um, yeah, you can take a tool chain from, 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 from these build uh, tools or you can download one with your um, distribution. It should all work, given that it has um, Python scripting support. That's uh, important. Mm. After you have your tool chain set up, you set up your debugger. Uh, and then set up a bare metal device. I'll just show that later on in the hands-on session. And then you combine every, everything in one kit of the type bare metal, and then you're ready to go. So that's basically all you have to do to have a Qt Creator uh, set up and running for bare metal and, um, development. So it's pretty quit, quick by now, and it's, I think, pretty comfortable. So um, it's still um, experimental for a reason. Uh, so um, the I mo mostly use the bare metal plugin with Cubes. That's the new build system for the Cubes environment. It's quite new, but um, it's describing the build in, in JSON. So it's quite good structured machine possible, and uh, I like it quite well. Then we, what's added new is CMake support, and there's quite some effort to improving CMake support in, in Qt Creator, but still CMake support is, I think, supported for several releases by now, so. Um, but CMake support for the bare metal plugin is new from the last year. You can also use QMake, but I would not recommend it because you have to set up a fake Qt because Qt, QMake always needs uh, to have set up a, um, a Qt um, um, environment and normally you don't run Qt on such puny devices. Um, okay. So, the backend QTC is using is the GDB protocol. So you need a um, hardware debugger which speaks um, the GDB protocol. Um, I think the two open source variants I know is open OCD, ST Link. And there are, of course, some commercial products um, which also have GDB support. Um, yeah, and if you have problems, there's a debugger log, um, and it shows you all the stuff they're talking about, uh, if the backend's talking with the GDB backend, and you see pretty easy, if you know a little bit GDB protocol, what's going on. And it's pretty good for debugging, so if you have problems, it's a good idea to post that. Um, with your problem description. Um, on Windows, there's currently a bug that you must use the asynchronous mode to control the debugger. But it's a good idea to enable this feature anyway because it's, in my opinion, the better way to uh, interact with the debugger. Okay, uh, what's new in uh, 2014? So. Um, there's a fast restart, so it's not possible um, to restart your debugging session without um, reflashing and stuff like that. But you can just 
press restart and the hardware resets your device and starts new, which is quite nice if you just were debugging and just noticed, oh, I stepped over the interesting part in my debugging session and I just noticed, oh, and then uh, especially if you have a, a little bit uh, more code to flash and um, your hardware debugger is not the fastest, um, depends on your, your, your setup. It might take some while to get you again to the position and having fast restart helps for that. Fast restart is also enabled in all the other GDB uh, backends. So for remote Linux where you have a SSH connection to your device, um, this might also help in starting up a little bit faster. But it's not so crucial because um, most single board computers with Linux have gotten so fast that it doesn't matter too much anymore. Um, but it's available anyhow. Um, okay, CMake support has been enabled for the bare metal plugin and um, there's been pipelining support which has been superseded by the GDB provider. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, the GDB provider support is not, has not been written by me, but by Dennis Chinkov. Thanks, by the way, for that. Um, it uh, does management of, of the um, hardware debugger backend, so you can, uh, you can um, start and stop your, your debugging uh, session or your hardware debugger automated from, from the view creator. Um, before you had to start your, your, your debugger uh, externally, so now you can just start it and it's pretty easy. Uh, starting a debug session is just one click, essentially. Um, okay, um, there are several run control settings and the target release for this stuff is currently in, in the um, mainline development branch um, is a 3.4 release, which will be released in a few weeks, months. I don't know exactly the time schedule. But it, the next release basically will carry this uh, improvement. Okay. Um, so that were the improvements done for um, the bare metal plugin last year. What I'm, uh, the next thing on my list in improving Qt Creator, and that's the uh, most requested feature, is um, make support. So currently generic um, build support is not um, enabled in, in, in bare metal. That's mainly because um, you need to implement an extra class for the generic plugin and that's not been done for the bare metal plugin. And I was uh, tinkering if it's not possible to change the generic stuff within Qt Creator so that you don't need to have an extra um, class for supporting generic stuff. So I was uh, not sure if I just implement it plain down or just change uh, a lot more in Qt Creator to enable that. Um, but that's the next thing on my list um, to improve. And with that, with generic support, it should also then be a, uh, possible to use Qt Creator for uh, debugging the kernel, um, which would be quite neat, I think, because if you're doing um, some driver development stuff and so on, you could then use it, for example, using um, BeagleBone with onboard. The white version had an onboard debugger, for example, and then you could directly use it for debugging the Linux kernel. One thing that would also be really neat to have is device view. So um, there's a plugin for Eclipse which has a structured device view. So you just give it an XML def file which describes the mem your memory and the register, for example, some hardware re register definitions. And you say, 
for example, there at, at this position there's a GPIO port and then you can just click on it and change the values of the GPIO port with the mouse. I think that would be quite neat to have. Okay, um, yeah, and then there's tracing support for ARM chips, but that's probably not anything which will be coming in the next year, so don't hold your breath. Okay, um, how much time do I have? Okay, um, so I just, oh, I forgot to get out my, my board. I just start up. So I have a small um, board over here. It has an it has an onboard debugger and an ARM chip on board, so you can just use it um, directly with an USB port. It's also powered by USB, and you get something like that for about 15 euros or so. So it's quite cheap. And it also has, for example, uh, this one has an acceleration sensor, which is quite nice for thinking about. Um, so I have a small cube-based project. Here you see, um, for example, how the cube project is described. And if you see over here, you see that I have an um, STM backend over here, and I'm actually a bit compromised. Oh, <laughs> damn! <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I saw that I had mirroring. Um, okay. <laughs> right now, um, you see I have a project open, and if you go, I, oh, it's German. Okay, I'm out of time to switch the language, but this is the uh, setup over here, and uh, these are the build and run settings, and if you create, you create over here a bare metal device type, and then you can set up this stuff, and you have, if the bare metal plugin is enabled, which is being done over here by um, by the plugins. There you can can enable all the plugins you have, and you have to enable the cubes stuff and the bare metal plugin over here. And if you have done that, you have all these bare metal options down here, and you have a bare metal section where you can set up your open OCD stuff. Um, so over here we have, for example, the commands for the OpenOCD setup on startup. So you can type in all the OpenOCD commands you need. And you have the commands for um, resetting, so you uh, restart your device. Um, this provider gets into the devices, and you have to set up an um, ST-Link device over here, and you you have to select a provider down here. So you can, um, for every kit, there's a device, and at this device is then um, connected to a GDB server provider. And if you have this set up, then hopefully you can just start up. I just set, in, uh, uh, so this is a really small project because it has, so, and then if you go just to debug, you see, okay, it's starting up. Up here, oops, up here I've enabled the GDB protocol, which is only needed for debugging, but I just showed it. You have um, your debugging view over here. This is a fast restart button. You can also switch, for example, to assembly view, which is quite nice for, for optimizations and stuff like that. You have your variable view over here and you have your threads back then. Okay, um, okay, uh, that's basically it.
thanks for your attention.